Hi guys, um, today I just wanted to go through a series of um, drawings that I've done to try and explain the way that energy moves in the body. Um, okay, so I'm going to run through this as quick as I can, there's a lot of information, uh, so I'm just going to get it all done and then we're going to go through each bit in other videos a bit separately. Uh, so, as you can see, uh, it's not an amazing drawing, but hopefully you can see the black outline of the human body, side on, and then you've got the red, the blue, the green, and so on, which we'll go through. Uh, okay, so energy in the body, we're not talking about spiritual energy, we're talking about actual chemical and physical energy in the body um, generated from the organs. Uh, so we're thinking about different things such as heat, um, chemical energy, mechanical energy, uh, water, uh, when we say water energy we mean um, uh, like gra gravitational energy uh, and, and things like that. So uh, what we've got here first is the two different energy circuits. Now this is uh, more clearly demonstrated in Chinese culture and Chinese uh, medicine. So we've got the energy circuit at the bottom and the energy circuit at the top. Now what happens here is most people when they describe energy, uh, they have this big circuit here when we have the uh, Little Nine Heaven meditation, the circulation through the meridians. Now this is the main governing channel. So we have the above here and the below. So let's start with the below and the red. So the red energy is all internal energy and it comes from within us and it comes from energy we've taken in through uh, breaking in materials, through water and solid foods and that gets digested through all different organs and creates energy in the body but is stored. So we have this internal energy. If you want to look at, for example, a tree, that comes in through the roots and through the feet. So it all comes in the lower section here and that creates the internal or the from the below part of the energy that we have inside us. Now that circulates here in the lower portion and it actually goes up the front of the legs into the lower stomach, which I'll show you in a second, and then back down through the back of the legs in this circulatory manner. Now as it goes round, it meets the lower stomach. So the lower stomach is below the navel where the hue in point in between the legs meets. And what it does, it coils in this area. And this is the coiling part where we see a lot of um, exchange in energies and such as the intestines, as you can see, it's layer upon layer like a capacitor wrapping around each other. Uh, so all this comes from the bottom and the below, and this creates your, your heat, your sexual energy. This is why uh, the Chinese believe you have your, your cauldron, your dantian in the, in the lower stomach, and this is this flask part here where everything uh, joins together. So this all creates heat. Now from the top, this is our above energy. This comes from uh, the air, the air around us. We breathe it in, it comes in from the above and down, and we bring it down into the lower stomach through our lungs. Now this channel comes in, down the front, down the front of the body, and up the back of the body in this circulation. Now it actually goes up into the head, uh, but for the purpose of the diagram, I've only drawn it up to here. Now, as this comes in, it circulates. Now, most people um, that I've talked to believe that this in the middle mixes, the red energy mixes with the blue energy. And that's actually blue energy, is actually called white energy. It's the white energy, but... Obviously, it wouldn't show up here if I used a white pen. So, the blue energy does mix with the red energy, but not actually interchanging liquids, or uh, if you were seeing it in a liquid state but, or an energy state, it coils around each other in separate tubes. So, although it mixes in uh, properties, it doesn't actually mix physically or energetically. So, the red intermingles with the blue, and it creates this up and down system because what happens is the red is hot, okay? The red is hot energy, it's warm. Uh, that's where the idea of calcination comes from and the inner thermostat of the body. Now what happens is when the white energy drops, because it's, uh, because it's cold, cold energy drops down and the red energy lifts up, because as we know heat rises and cool air drops. As that mixes in the middle, the red heats up the uh, white energy which fires back up through the top as it rises, but also the white energy that's come in, the blue energy on here, cools the red and lets it flow. So we've got this alternating cooling and heating circuit which sends things up both ways this way and that creates this circulation going one up, one down, one up, one down and they heat each other. So it's a complementary system. Now typically actually because you can see the blue and the red you also get the idea of a heart. You know, we draw the heart with deoxygenated uh, blood of blue and oxygenated blood of red and what happens with the heart is the chamber that pumps in one uh, also 
sucks in the other at the same time. It, it, one expands and one contracts, okay? And that's what happens with the upper and the lower body. When we say the lower body, we mean the lower stomach, this very small portion in the lower area where the hue and point meets the navel. So as we breathe in through air, through mechanical energy, using the lungs to expand, the diaphragm through muscular energy pushes downwards and expands the upper cavity. And that sucks air in. But at the same time the upper cavity expands, the lower cavity must contract. It must shrink down to size. So as one opens, the other must shrink. And what happens is, this is on the breath in. So as we breathe in, we take in energy from above, um, we're pushing energy from below downwards. So we've got this downwards action here. Boom, down, down. Now, as we do the opposite, as we breathe out, the upper cavity contracts and the lower cavity expands. So on the breath in, we have this. On the breath out, we have this. And this pumping action pumps this energy up and down in a line like this, bam, 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 straight up through the body, the energy channels. And that also pumps the blood through the body in the same sort of fashion using the heart. It breathes in, it brings air through the lungs, um, you know, through, through the pump action. But it also compresses and uh, expands the organs in the body because the body is a vacuum. Outside of the lungs, it's a vacuum. So when this expands, all the organs in the upper cavity expand as well. And they also contract when we breathe out and same in the lower. So looking at the organs... Okay, the Chinese believe we have 10 major organs, not including the brain, for example. Now, we have five yin organs and five yang organs. Now, the yin organs are always situated in the upper half, above the, um, or usually above the, uh, uh, the, the diaphragm, and then the yin organ, the yang organs, are situated below. So that means that we always have one set of organs expanding and one set of organs contracting. And that actually makes the energy push through the meridian system because the meridian system is linked to the organs like pipes. And if we connect a hose pipe to a balloon and we squash the balloon, the air will fire through the pipe. And it's the same thing. So this vacuum opens and expands and contracts in the upper and lower halves. And that fires energy through the different meridian systems, which we'll talk about in a second. So let's quickly go over the yin organs. All right, so I've drawn them here. Uh, so on the yin organs, we have the liver, the heart, the stomach, the lungs, and the kidneys. Now, each organ is related to a different type of energy, and it does that function, and it uses that type of energy to perform its function. So looking here at the heart, heart is a lot to do with heat, uh, and the, the warmth of the blood, we call it keeping the blood the warm. Um, and that, in the alchemical sense, is all to do with calcination and heat. And I put a little positive there, because it's the positive side. It draws energy in from above, and it uses, you know, from the air, it brings the air and, and the um, oxygen and it, it uses it in the blood. And it's a very positive uh, way of using the um, thermal energy. So we have thermal energy in the heart. Now, its counterpart in the opposite part is the small intestine. And I put calcination negative there because it's all about expelling. So this, we're bringing energy in here, we eat here, we breathe here, but then we expel it outwards here, yeah, waste products. So we have the raw materials coming in, we have the waste products here, and that's what this symbolizes. The plus is the product coming in with the heart and the oxygen in the blood, and the small intestine is using the same principle of calcination and heat to expel the energy outwards in the lower body at the same time, but the opposite timing. So as one expands, one contracts, alternating. Uh, let's go through these quickly. So we have the stomach. The stomach is an earth element, uh, and that's fermentation. So what it does, it locks in um, the compounds and it digests them. And we have the opposite one down here of the spleen, and that does it in a negative way to pass it through the system. Uh, moving on to uh, metal energy, or lungs, which is also to do with mechanical uh, movement energy, um, which is directly reflected in the actual diaphragm itself, being a muscle that moves up and down, which powers the lungs. And that's also a separation, because what happens in the lungs is we separate the um, air compounds from each other. In the negative aspect, it's the large intestine, as the large intestine also mechanically, like a muscle, squeezes um, your waste products and it separates it by, by passing it through this mechanical kind of caterpillar worm-like structure using mechanical muscular energy. Uh, we have 
The element of water, uh, the Chinese element of water, in the kidneys, in the upper part of the body, and in the bladder, in the lower part of the body. And we use this through the idea of distillation, that's why it's got the water aspect. Um, and through, this is uh, what we call elastic energy uh, in chemistry. So uh, we bring in the water, and we lock it down, we break it down, we dissolve things in the kidneys. And then in the bladder, we use the same idea of the dissolution of the water to expel our water products. So all our salts and everything else is digested and it's, it's diluted into the water, which then gets expelled out through the bladder in a negative fashion on the exhale. Uh, so finally, we have the liver. Now, the liver is the um, element of wood in Chinese uh, medicine. And it's also a conjunction, okay? So we're putting things together, we're starting to join things together in the same with the gallbladder in a negative fashion. So this gives us five yin, uh, so yang uh, organs in the lower part of the body, five yin organs in the upper part of the body. So in the vacuum, as these expand, these contract, and as these expand, these contract. And that's all done on the natural breath in, breath out of the body and the body cavities working together. And what those do, as we said before, they have a set of pipes. Each one has a set of pipes hidden in the arteries, which we found this out through a Korean scientist managed to pump dye through a certain set of pipes hidden in the artery walls and the capillary walls, which uh, came up when, when scanned as the same structure as the Chinese meridian system. And this pumps energy then. So these working together like this, alternating this physical energy, then pumps this energy round these channels and it pumps it round in a clockwise fashion this way. So it goes up the front of the body and down the back of the body. Uh, it actually does go through the arms as well, but I don't want to go into the arms for now. Let's just look at the main core. So it goes up the front of the body, down the back of the body, periodically like this. And it does this through the whole, all the sets of pipes are connected. And it does a 24 hour cycle, but in each cycle um, it has uh, so many going up, so many coming down. Um, and it, it, it rotates like this. So we've got this energy, this um, energy through the liver going in a clockwise fashion this way around the body, up the front, down the back, all times through the day. Now, you also have your governing and conception channel. Now, these are your main meridian channels that we always talk about, and this goes up the spine and down the front. And this is done by pumping, again, the combined energy of these organs and also this inwards-outwards channel here of the energy going in and out. So those, those organs are all like um, five separate sets of systems which join together to make this primary set of energy here and here. Because you have five at the bottom, five at the top. And as it goes round here, this main channel goes this way round, okay? So we've got this one going this way and this one going this way on the outside of the body. Now, if we look at that as kind of a rotation like this going around, you've got the inner circle going one way and the outer circle going the other way. Now these two types of energies mimic the idea of a capacitor or a ma magnetic, um, electromagnetic field by rotating within each other in opposite directions. What happens is that creates a magnetic field. Now this magnetic field surrounds the body and it's been proven fact that we do have a magnetic field around the body, all living things do. Um, so there was a team of scientists that, uh, that went in to study the magnetic field of the planet and what they found was there was a series of different um, scientists, one for geography, um, one for the minerals and geology and the other one for culture and things like that and they all had different um, specialities. So when they got together it was important that the, the concept of this magnetic field and the way it was placed and, and divided met the needs of all the different fields of scientists to make sure it was proven. And what they came up with, they managed to decide that the actual magnetic field of the Earth is split up into 12 uh, pen pentagon shapes here. So we have a pentagon at the top, pentagon at the bottom, five on the bottom section and five going around the top section here. Now it's very important we mention this and because it's the same, we find that the macrocosm of the planet is the same as the microcosm of the person. So if we split our own uh, magnetic field into 12 different pentagon, pentagon shapes, then we get this structure on the green here, as we can see, with the north, north pole at the top, south pole at the bottom. Okay, true north, true south. Now, pen, pent or number five is very important because the Chinese have the five elements, which is all to do with um, energy. 
But also, Wicca, for example, uses a pentagram, which is a five-pointed star, which is also, again, number five, and that goes towards energy. So again, we see this number five in the pentagram, and the, and the different sides of this creating the magnetic field. So we can see this number five in, in culture, and it's, it's even in the, um, it's used in five. Five represents Mars for energy uh, within the planets of, of for Greece and Rome. And also in the Tree of Life, the Kabbalah, the uh, number five represents energy, again, pure energy. So again, we have this five for energy and the energy cycles. And it might be true that they already knew this back in the day, but there was a series of blocks of five uh, shapes. So if we arrange the um, organs around these, we have the five yin organs on the top five pentagram row. And we also have the Ye, uh, the yang five organs at the bottom around the bottom um, area of the pentagram so we have five and five and these all link in so we can see these flower shapes actually combine one at the bottom one at the top like this so we have pure yang which separates into five different types of yang energy at the bottom which then connects to the equal opposite uh, part of the yin organ on the energy which then combines into pure yin so pure yin pure yang and the, the Ten divisions in the centre, which all mix together, um, so we can see we start to map out the magnetic field in blocks of twelve in the pentagons. So with the with this, this is a very important part. It's the last thing we'll mention before we move on to a different video is the magnetic uh, energy also comes with electric energy. Now we obviously have electric energy in the body through nerves and the brain stem um, and things like that. Now it's proven that uh, electrical energy is then uh, the main, the primary cause of creating uh, light waves through, through waves comes um, the electric. And so without this electric power, we wouldn't actually be able to create light waves. And light waves are the very first step in creating consciousness, our subconscious and, and, and the colors which are, uh, come from these waves, which as you would then see would be the chakras, which are primary colors, uh, well, different colors, but made from color and light. And that's also the same. So we radiate this um, level of light and we also take it in which uh, powers the electric side or comes from the electric side, both directions equally, and generates this magnetic field. So really this energy step, this whole system of energy of one thing going up and down, this continued expansion contraction with the internal energy on the above and the external energy below, which are um, warming and cooling, in here, through the capacitor in the middle, through the stomach section, through breathing, uh, then creates a meridian set by pulsing the organs, which goes this way, and then an internal organ going this way, from the energy cycle going this way, which creates the magnetic and electrical field, which then starts to build our own subconscious. So we can see how it works, and hopefully let's give you a little bit of a visual understanding of uh, where I'm getting my ideas from. Uh, but this is still like a rough idea, but it's all based upon the different levels of, of thinking and obviously backed up by more modern scientific theory as well. But if you've got any questions or anything to add to this, please let me know. I'm quite happy to um, take on board ideas and uh, obviously expand because, you know, there might be someone out there with a piece of knowledge that I haven't got yet, but we'll just link things together a little bit more. So feel free to, to throw things across to me. But equally, if there's something that hasn't been explained too clearly and you want a bit more in-depth, information on then also let me know um, so i hope you've enjoyed i know it's been fast and i know there's been a lot going on but hopefully you can take something from that and add it to your um idea uh, again but but energy comes from the physical and leads on to the mental uh, but the energy itself is an entire process because a lot of people skip from the physical straight to the conscious mind um, and it's very important we don't miss this section out as even the uh, Chinese, with the Chinese medicine and even the martial arts of Xing Yi, spent an entire, um, you know, several lifetimes developing this one aspect alone and trying to understand it so we could understand it better in the future. Um, so it's very important to, to spend a little bit of time on this one. So I've been uh, Sifu Andrew Platt, hope you've enjoyed and um, take care. Thank you.